Hello, in this particular video, I am going to tell you a simple trick to memorize the Orgel diagram. So, before going into the trick, uh, what is Orgel diagram? Orgel diagram is basically a correlation diagram or a correlation graph. Uh, we plot a graph between two terms, correlation diagram that is drawn between one is our ligand field strength, which we represented by delta, ligand field strength that is represented by delta which we plotted in the x axis and uh, against energy that is plotted in the y axis. So, energy versus ligand field strength that is the orgel diagram or energy we can also call it as the spectroscopic term. So, usually this orgel diagram it is a quantitative diagram. So, we cannot find out the value of energy for each field strength. Instead, what we can do is that using this orgel diagram we can find out the number of spin allowed transitions, the number of transitions that are possible for a spectroscopic term that we can find out using the Orgel diagram. So, basically in exams questions are asked from this part. They ask you to find out the number of spin allowed transitions for any uh, spectroscopic term. So, in order to find out the number of transitions, we need to have the Orgel diagram in our memory. So, it can also be derived. The Orgel diagram can also be derived, but it will take a little while. So, it is always better to memorize the graph so that easily we can find out the number of transitions. Within few minutes, we can answer such questions. So, that is what I am going to tell you. So, before going into the trick, we need to remember certain things about Orgel diagram. First thing is that Orgel diagram is only used for spin allowed transition. So, we have two types of diagram. One is called as the Orgel diagram. The other one is called as Tenabe Sugano diagram. So, Orgel diagram is used only for spin allowed transitions. What do we mean by spin allowed transitions? Which means delta S should be equal to 0. That is called a spin allowed transition. So, if we have a D5 species, D5 is a spin forbidden transition. So, for D5 species, we cannot use Orgel diagram. Okay. So, that is the first point. The second point about Orgel diagram that we have to remember is that it is only used for weak field ligands that is high spin complexes and it can be used for both octahedral as well as tetrahedral but it is used only for high spin complexes okay and it is not used for low spin complex you cannot find out for low spin complex that is why we have tenabe sugano diagram in which we can find for both high spin as well as low spin one more point that we will be uh, coming across when we draw the diagram is that when you have two spectroscopic lines okay two lines of same symmetry if there are two spectroscopic lines having the same symmetry they will ripple each other on the other hand when you have two spectroscopic lines of different symmetry of different symmetry they will cross each other different symmetry will cross each other now what do we mean by this Say for example, if you have two spectroscopic terms, one spectroscopic term is T1G of any uh, given um, atomic uh, ground state term symbol and the other uh, spectroscopic term is also T1G. So, for two spectroscopic terms, if they are having same symmetry, okay, T1G, T1G, then in that case, they both will be repelling each other. Why? If you have two spectroscopic terms, like if I have one as my A2G, the other spectroscopic term is my T1G. So, they are of different symmetry. So, what they can do is they can cross each other. That is one point that we have to remember in Orkel diagram. Now, let us just jump into what we have to remember in order to draw the graph. Okay. See, the first thing is we need to know the ground state terms for each configuration. So, if I write, first thing we need to know the table, then only we can draw the graph. Okay. So, the table is we have electronic configuration. Okay. We have electronic configuration. And then we have the ground state term, ground state term and then we will have the first excited state term, first excited state term, okay. So, what are the electronic configurations? See, how do we memorize? We have D1, D2, D3, D4 and so on, right? We will write it in this order, D1, D2, D3, D4, okay. And then we will have D5. Anyhow, we cannot find out, we, we are not going to plot D5 in Orgel diagram, but still we will remember the ground state term symbol for D5 as well. Okay. So, D5. And then when you start from D6, D6 will come over here. Okay. D6, D7, 
D8 and then D9. So, these are the electronic configurations. So, you can remember it as a pair. D1 and D9 will have the same ground state term. Similarly, D2, D8 will have the same ground state term. D3, D7, D4, D6. They will have the same. Now, how do we remember? Just remember it like this. D, F, F, D. Okay. So, it starts with D. Middle, we will have F. Again, we will end it with D. Okay. And then, at last, for D5, the ground state term symbol is yes. So, D, F, F, D, S. Okay. Now, how do we remember the multiplicity? See, D1, okay, so it is 1 over here, right, it is 1 over here, so it is going to be a doublet, 2D. Now here D2, so it is going to be a triplet, then D3, so it is going to be a quartet, D4, so it is going to be a quintet, D5, so it is going to be a sextet. So 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, that is all. So for D1 and D9, the ground state term symbol is doublet D. For D2 and D8, the ground state term symbol is triplet F. For D3 and D7, the ground state term symbol is quartet F. And for D4 and D6, the ground state term symbol is quintet D. And for D5, the ground state term symbol is sextet S. Okay. Now, coming to the excited state term symbol. See, for D, there is no first excited state. There is only ground state term symbol. For F, there is one first excited state that is P. For triplet also and for quartet. Both for F, the ground state term symbol is F then the first excited state is going to be P. Again the same. So, triplet P and then quadrant F. So, that is all. So, this is the table that we need to know in order to plot the Orgel diagram. It is not only sufficient to know the table, we also need to know. Once we know the ground state term symbol, we also need to know the Mulliken term symbols for each of these. Okay. So, we will uh, again uh, draw another table in which we will plot the Mulliken term symbols. So, for each atomic term symbol, we have the corresponding Mulliken term symbol in both tetrahedral and octahedral field. So, I will write down the atomic term symbol and over here, I will write down the Mulliken term symbol. Okay. So, Mulliken term symbol, we will be memorizing it for two. One is going to be octahedral. The other one is going to be tetrahedral. Fine. So, for each atomic term symbol, we will draw the, we will, I mean, memorize the Mulliken term symbol for octahedral as well as for the tetrahedral. Okay. So, let us start. So, what are the atomic term symbols that we have? We have S and then we have P, then D and then F. So, these are our atomic term symbols. Fine. Okay. Now, how do we memorize the Mulliken term symbols? It is very simple. See, for S, you start with A1G. Okay, S is going to be A1. So, S is the starting, right? So, it is going to start with A and the first uh, first number that is 1. So, A1G. For P, it is going to be T. T1G. D, everyone must be knowing what are, what are the Mulliken term symbols for D. They are EG and T2G, right? Now, for F. Now, for F, there are going to be three term symbols. One is going to be, since, since we have put A1G for S, here it is going to be A2G. Then we are going to have two T terms. One is going to be T1G. The other one is going to be T2G. That is all. Okay. So, A, A1G for S, T1G for P. For D, we have EG and T2G. Okay. That mostly everyone will, must be knowing. Okay. Now, for F, we have A and then two Ts combined. So, A already we have put 1G for S. Right. So, you can remember it like that. So, 2G, then T1G and T2G. Now, whenever we talk about tetrahedral, that G part is going to be missing. G stands for Gerade. So, this gerraid and ungerraid, it comes from group theory and we use it only for octahedral complexes. We do not use it for tetrahedral. So, whenever you have tetrahedral, the same term symbols, but you just have to eliminate that G. So, for tetrahedral, it is going to be A1. Then here it is going to be T1. Here it is going to be E plus T2. Just you eliminate that G. Okay. And then A2 plus T1 plus T2. That is all. So, this is the Mulliken term symbol that you have to remember. Then only we can plot the term symbols on the y-axis. Now, let us uh, straight away jump into the graph. So, I will draw both the graphs and show you how we can memorize it. So, we are going to have, see for Orgel diagram, we will be having two set of graphs. What are the two sets of graphs? For D2, D8, D3 and D7, we will have one graph. Okay, that is one Orgel diagram. D2, D8, D3 and D7 will have one Orgel diagram because they are having the same ground state term, right? For D1, D9, D4, D6, we are going to draw the second graph. Okay, so basically we have to remember two graphs. So, two tables and then two graphs, that is what we have to remember for Orgel diagram. Okay, so the first thing that we are going to do is we have to draw the combined Orgel diagram for D1, D6, D4 and D9. 
so that is the first table okay from the table we have the first and the second loop that is see d1 d9 d4 d6 that is the first graph that we are going to draw now when you remember it itself you have to remember it in pair how do you remember d1 d6 d4 d9 that is how you have to remember it that is when you will be able to plot the graph properly now how can we remember it there is a simple trick that i'll tell you see we have d1 d4 d6 d9 right d1 and d6 they form one pair how do i remember that just take the difference between the two if you take the difference between 1 or 6 1 and 6 okay just the magnitude it is going to be 5 so the difference between the two should be 5 then that will form one pair so d1 and d6 are one pair okay this is one pair the second pair is d4 and d9 they will always exist as pair so you have to remember it as pair so 9 minus 4 or 4 minus 9 it's going to give you the magnitude difference is 5 so that is going to be one pair okay so you have to remember the pair so for the first four spectroscopic terms you have two pairs one is d1 d6 the other one is d4 d9 we remember the pair by just remembering the difference okay now let us draw the graph so in the graph we will have one y axis and then we are going to have one x axis so as i told you in the x axis we are going to plot delta that is the ligand field strength and here we are going to plot the energy okay now this is our origin which means the ligand field strength is zero over here okay when the ligand field strength is zero so for which orbital we are plotting so which for which we are plotting the orbital diagram for first is for d spectroscopic term is d okay so i'll put d over here so when the ligand field strength is zero it is having this energy okay now what will happen as you increase or decrease the field strength that is what we are going to see how do we remember see the only confusion that arises is which pair will be placed in which position so for that what you can do is so as i told you d1 and d6 are one pair d4 and d9 are second pair right so i'll write it like this d1 d6 okay and then i'll write d1 d6 over here first one will come in the numerical order so first d1 d6 pair then followed by d4 d9 second pair here also i'll write d4 d9 again in now after writing this d1 d6 d4 d9 as pairs next thing what we have to write is which pair tetrahedral and which pair octahedral see we have two pairs okay we have two things one is tetrahedral the other one is octahedral okay just remember it as two okay to2 the word two okay so t comes first then o comes in two right so d1 d6 first it's going to be t so t for tetrahedral o for octahedral so if this is tetrahedral this is going to be octahedral similarly here if it is tetrahedral straight opposite here it's octahedral here it is tetrahedral okay now what does this mean see when you have d1 or d6 in tetrahedral okay if they are giving you in question any species which is having d1 configuration in tetrahedral then that is going to fall on the left hand side if you have d1 or d6 in octahedral that is going to fall in the right hand side because for left hand side and right hand side the uh, terms will be different how will we draw the term for d it is having two molecular terms one is going to be eg the other one is going to be t2g right so again you will remember it in alphabetical order now again you will remember it in alphabetical order see for d we have two molecular terms one is eg and t2g e comes first so eg will come at the bottom t2g will come at the top if it is octahedral we put the g if it is tetrahedral we simply put it as e and t2 similarly on this side just op reverse whatever you have put it there okay so diagonally opposite see if t2 comes in the top over here then it is going to come at the bottom over here similarly eg is at the bottom right so it's going to go to the top that's all so all you have to re remember is remember just one side of the graph so the automatically the other side becomes easy so one is the pair that you will remember so that you can place it another one you just remember this word two so t comes first then comes o so this is the combined orgel diagram for d1 d6 d4 and d9 now let us draw the second orgel diagram that is for the other four uh, terms spectroscopic terms Okay, now we are going to draw the combined orgel diagram for D2, D8, D3 and D7. So, when we talk about these four uh, atomic terms, they are going to have two uh, term symbols, okay, two atomic terms. One is going to be F, that is the ground state. Again, it is going to have the first excited state, that is going to be P, okay. So, the graph will have two things. One is going to be F, the other one is going to be P. Now, first thing, we will remember the pair. How do we remember the pair? As I told you, D2 is the smallest among the four, right? So, D2. 
just check with which it is going to form the pair as i told you the difference should be equal to 5 so when you see the difference okay when difference should be 5 okay when you see the difference between uh, 2 and 7 it's 5 right so d2 and d7 they will form one pair this is one pair what is the second pair the second pair is d3 and d8 again the difference is going to be 5 so this is going to form one pair so if i draw the graph in the graph again i am going to have the ligand field strength that is delta in my x axis and energy in my y axis now in this energy axis we are going to have two spectroscopic terms one is f that is the ground state then another one is p so the energy of p is going to be higher than that of f so that is why p is on the top and f is at the bottom okay because it's ground state this is the excited state okay again let us write down these okay so d2 d7 according to numerical order d2 d7 will come first okay so the same d2 d7 i'll write it over here again next here it is going to be d3 d8 and here also d3 d8 so as i told you just remember the letter sorry the word 2 so t comes first so tetrahedral over here then octahedral over here so if it is tetrahedral over here it's going to be octahedral over here and then tetrahedral at the bottom diagonally opposite okay now let us draw the graph see for f we know that it has uh, three terms what are the three terms the three terms are remember it in this order okay a2 t2 t1 or a2g t2g t1g for f sorry for p we have only one term that is t1 or t1g okay let us plot so there are going to be three lines and we will again start from the lowest See, according to alphabetical order a comes first so a2 or a2g is going to be at the bottom a2g or a2 then it is going to be t2g or t2 then it is going to be t1g or t1 okay so this is for f term now the same thing diagonally opposite you have to do over here okay what do i do if the t1 is at the top then here it's going to be at the bottom then t2 will be at the middle and then a2 will be at the top okay okay now for p term see p will have only one molecular term that is t here as i told you okay as we started the video with certain points what did we learn we learned that when the two spectroscopic terms have the same symmetry they will repel each other so for f there is one t1g now for p also i am going to plot one t1g so they are going to repel each other like this so it's going to repel so that we showed by a bent over here so this is going to be t1g or t1 of p orbit I mean p uh, term okay but here when it comes on this side there is a2 on this side at the top right so this is a2 is a different term and t1 is a different term so they will cross each other here it is going to cross while here it is repelling okay when they are of same symmetry they will repel each other when they are of different symmetry can you see here it is a to g and uh, here what did we plot here it is going to be t1 g or t1 sorry here it's going to be t1g or t1 so they are crossing here this is our crossover point okay so if i have to simplify and show you this graph the graph will look something like this now the graph is going to look like this okay so you are having it like this here we will put d uh, f here we will put p and here we are going to have three lines here we are going to have three lines and here this line will bend because of rippling here this line will cross that's all. This is how the orgel diagram for the other four spectroscopic terms will look like. So, if you practice the diagram one or two times, this is going to get fixed in the memory. So, whenever they ask questions on uh, to find out the number of um, transitions that are possible for any term. So, they will give you either they will give you the metal and ask you. So, you have to find out uh, its configuration and fit it into uh, the place and find out the number of transition or they will directly give you for d3 octahedral the number of transition so it's going to be very easy if you remember the diagram okay i hope you understood uh, whatever i told in this video and you found it helpful thank you